Um, no, I wanted to have you on because, I mean, obviously you are fun to talk to. We're yeah, friends. Yeah, likewise, we talk all the time. yeah. yeah. Um, you know, Even though we don't agree on everything, it's right. still cool to talk. Yeah. Yeah. You are obviously, uh, uh, you know, in the know of everything that's happening in the restaurant industry. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot that's changed since the last time you've been <laughs> on and yeah. a lot that's about to change again. Yep. So I thought it'd be, you know, fun to have you back on and shoot the well, shit. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Thanks, mm-hmm. man. Awesome. Awesome. You know, Always. Yeah. You know, there's so, no really point to any of these podcasts. We're just talking. You know. They, uh, yeah, a lot of stuff. The, the Cisco thing was big. Yeah. That was huge to everybody. And I, it just amazes me. I got a lot of calls from people asking if I had a solution. Um, uh, we did, and I was able to help introduce some people to some people. But uh, uh, the biggest thing I see out of that is, is uh, I still can't believe that Cisco um, is still selling people, that people are still driving over to Will Call, still picking shit up. They're not blaming Cisco for what happened. They're saying, oh, they're, they're good people because they're drinking the blue Kool-Aid, man. And I don't have anything no. against I have good friends that work at Cisco and yeah. people that are drivers. I'm not, you know, they're local. I don't want to bash anybody that have uh, employing people. But they're the way they're doing business is just wrong. Oh, it's for sure. wrong. Shit. I mean, Cis- I, uh, Tim at Buried Acorn was just telling me two days ago, he's still ordering from Cisco every week because that's where I think, I think that's where they get their food. And... Um, and he's picking it up, and they're still charging him a ninety dollar delivery fee. You need to introduce me. I, me- I yeah. met Tim through Facebook. We should set up a time to go have lunch yeah. or do something there. I'd love to meet him and talk to him. Yeah, his wife. What's his wife? Angela. Uh, Crystal. Crystal. Yeah. Crystal. Yeah. Crystal handles most of that kind yeah. of stuff. But um, uh, so I mean, so when he said that, I was like, why aren't you? It's like switch to Lorenzo's. You know, switch to somebody. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Lorenzo's. Yeah. And his response was, no, because then I have to go. And then I have to switch. There, one thing that I've one one of the many things I've learned, and I, I I get it, I definitely get it. One of the many things I've learned about restaurant owners and business owners in general over the past couple of years is, it, it's you're familiar with the pain you know, and so right. to get out of it is is like your brain, like it's I, I've all, I've usually described it as like your brain is a highway, and you order every week. I go to Cisco. I place my order. I press my button. I go and I pick it up, yeah. and I'm done. And you've developed that highway to try and turn off, get somebody to get off at exit 38 to go get shit at Lorenzo's, even if you tell them it's going to save them money. Even if you should prove it to them. I, I lived in that space for 17 years with Dining Alliance and trying to convince people. And we learn um, somebody's linen company. They don't really have a relationship, maybe with the driver yeah. more than the salesman or their credit card prompt. People coming in every day, hey, save me money. Even their paper Guys, hey, I'm buying paper. I don't really care as long as I'm saving money. Food guy, most rela- most relationship-driven sale in the entire restaurant. Hmm. They're probably coming in twice a week. Yeah. To get to to, uh, they're sitting down face to face with the owner or the manager for an hour. The owner has their cell phone number. A lot of times, those salespeople work in the restaurant. They're bringing food ideas in. They build that. And when when you're a Cisco or a U.S. Foods or some, especially Cisco, it's a cult. Yeah. They want you to bleed blue. Cisco's the best. You should only be buying from Cisco. You only need to get the blue box. The blue box is going to come. We're the biggest and the best and the baddest. And that's not the case. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, their pricing, uh, you know, I don't know enough about it to, to be able to speak accurately about that. But if I had to guess, I'd say the biggest company in food service probably has some of the best pricing. No. They don't. They have a formula on the back end. And I'm not saying it's exclusive to Cisco. Other companies do the same thing. It's a it's a business that's for profit. Uh, if you're the salesman for that company, you're trying to, you know, the, the way they pay commissions out is basically uh, for every dollar. If you're a commissioned-based salesman and you're off salary, you're going to average 2.4 to 2.8% mm. off the sale. So if you sell $100,000 a week, you make, you know, 2800 bucks. So the more margin you can build, the more. So Cisco, I know, has software built into the program where if you're a regular customer and you're buying every week and you buy Rotella's sliced bread every week and, and uh, you're getting in, it's $19.20, and you buy it for six weeks the same and you don't say anything, they'll raise the price 2% automatically. They have ways to build pricing increases in, and if you don't say anything, six weeks later they build it again. Is that Cisco or is that most? That's a lot of them have that. I'm not okay. saying it's exclusive yeah. to Cisco, but a lot of the biggies have it. Now a Lorenzo's, a Renzi, yeah. a, a, a Minio, local places here. Uh, uh, who was else was it? Deli Boys. They don't have that software built in. Yeah, you know? and I should just say, 
because uh, our insurance hasn't kicked in yet. This is all hypothetical. Yes, and, all uh, hypothetical. It's alleged. All good. <laughs> <laughs> My insurance hasn't kicked in yet. Um, but somebody will soon be in your corner. Someone, CH Insurance. They'll uh, be in your corner. They're in your corner. Junior. Actually, I, I, I won't. Well, I'll tell the story. I don't care. Uh, I lo- it's been great working with CH Insurance so far. I mean, Dave, you work with Dave? Dave Wicker. Yeah. Um, they're on top of it. Got a gorgeous office, office downtown. Uh, when I first went in there, I, I talked to him a couple times. Just I, Dave, or did you meet anybody else down there? I didn't meet anybody else. Well, so I contacted them because I see the most of their advertising. And honestly, yeah, they do a very good job. He's got somebody he pays to. Yeah, yeah. When I'm think, when I was thinking about, okay, because we have insurance now through like a big company that I just did a one eight hundred number. Yeah. You know, when I first got started. Um, so anyway, so I was like, all right, whatever. So when I went and met with them, I brought everybody in their office and eat local card. It's like a free gift. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. You know, and it was cool. Dave walked me around, introduced me to all the staff, you know, here's Anthony, here's his business. Um, Dave came down here. He's like, Hey, I finally figured it out. Yada, yada, yada. Um, so what's funny is his nephew owns a pizza shop up on Onondaga Hill. What's the name of it? Uh, I forget. Hoogily, you know, something. Know. Anyways, yeah. um, only been open like a year or two, I think. <laughs> but like a month ago, I did a Instagram story, and I was like, and because I've had three the day that we were at the retreat. Remember yeah. those old people that were sitting behind yeah, yeah, us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was yeah. Like yelling at the, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so I had that experience, and then Rebecca and I go to Copper Top, and same thing. Like this group of like old people are sitting behind us talking louder than anybody, annoying as shit. I mean, it was just... So I do an Instagram story of old people are fucking the worst when it comes oh to... Oh, my ID. God. Okay, that's going to get you far. Yeah. Trying to be fun. You yeah, know, being it was funny. being funny, but not mean, right? right. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, I had two people. One of them DM'd me and said, go fucking die. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then another person just DM'd me and said, you suck. That's not bad. One of them was Dave's nephew. <laughs> oh my god, that's fucking funny. That's hilarious. Oh my god, that's hilarious. <laughs> so Dave was like, "Oh, my nephew owns a opened up a pizza shop up on Hunter." Oh Hill. my god! And when he said the name <laughs> of it, I was like, I didn't say anything to him, but I'm like, that's the fucking kid that told Shh. me. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. They're really good people uh, down there. Yes. Juniors are good. They they do a lot for the community. Yeah. And his his big thing is we're in your corner because he's on the corner. Yeah. Down there, so. I've known Joe Cavertino for, oh, my God, for 20-plus yeah. years. I'm happy to work with, you know, I mean, you think of, when you're doing business locally, it's not, I think, it, A, it's important that you're supporting local because the primary reason, which we're going to get into here in a second. Okay. Um, your tax dollars stay local. Yes. Yeah. Insurance is, I'm sure, a little different right. because they're, sell, you know, they're the massive companies are funding or insuring you. Um, but... We all know the percentages. When you support local, I think isn't like seventeen percent of the dollars to if you spend your money at a chain, it's either seven or seventeen percent of the dollars stay in the community. Really? I don't know that stat. Yeah. Only yeah. Cow, yeah. It's something small because yeah. most of the money in the bank account, if you're going to Buffalo Wild Wings, it's going to their bank account at their headquarters. I wouldn't use them as an example. I have a good friend that works at Buffalo Wild Wings, so I'm not going to dish Buffalo Wild Wings. Let's say it's McDonald's. Let's say Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut. So if you go to, if there's any Pizza Hut's left, if you go to Pizza Hut and they make a deposit, that money goes to Wichita, Kansas the next day. Right. It's in their national bank account, or unless you're a franchisee or whatever. Yeah. But But most of that money goes to another state. Correct. Wherever they are. Correct. Yeah. Right. If you're supporting a local company, it's like 40% or 30 stays here, whatever. Yeah. Some yeah. high percentage stays here because, you know, everybody's paying their taxes And if you, and other, you take it one step farther, so, I mean, uh, insurance people make money. That's how yeah. they, that's the job is to make commission off your sale, the sale of you. So Dave somehow is going to make a commission, right. whatever size percentage. And you're not against that because no. you're. You know, you want people to, you want to sell your stuff and make money too. Yeah. So when he, when he makes money off your sale, he's probably spending it locally, right? right. So he's going to spend that money that he made in commissions For sure. at, a, at a restaurant down here or there or whatever. I did talk to them today and, and I was talking to Larry, one of the guys over there. Larry's a great guy. He's probably one of the better guys. There's a bunch of good guys over there. Larry's one of the better ones. And uh, we were talking about different places and he said, I see you post a lot about Cross the Hall Cafe. Mm-hmm. I said, fucking love that place. Yeah. I, Joe does a great job. He goes, we get food there like every day. Hmm. Like every day they support Joe. Yeah. He's just a, Joe's a good guy. The yeah. food there is amazing. He's got that little bitty spot. Yeah. I'm not trying to p- non-promote anybody else, yeah. but. 
you know. I um I I first met Joe because he when they first opened I was kind of like cross the hall cafe, you know, whatever. Yeah. Been a bunch of places tried to be in there. Yeah. Yeah. Great spot. Um but not uh, for parking or you know, it's challenging. Yeah. Yeah. But it I mean, let's be honest. The people that are going to across the hall cafe don't live in a suburb, and if they do, they work downtown. Correct. So they're Correct. used to it. Yeah. You know, you're. Ah, uh, good point. You know, you're probably not getting somebody that's like, oh, where do I want to go at breakfast today? Let me come in from Baldwinsville to across the. I hall drive cafe. in from Fulton and I park illegally and I run in and leave my car there and knock on wood. I've yet to get a tea- ticket. So if anybody's yeah. listening to this podcast, it's a city police officer that gives yeah. parking tickets. Or the mayor. I drive a white. What kind of car do you have? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't drive a, a different colored car. Uh, yeah. It says Exo Taco on the side yeah. of it. That's yeah. the car you yeah. drive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Bust Chris Smiley. But uh, but he did, so I first met Joe. He came into Three One Fried like our first week open and supported. He's such us. A good, his whole family works there. They're just good people. Yeah. And now I mean the 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 good side of things as well as the bad side of things is his niche and what he does is catering locally sandwiches mm. lunches you know he does some of that and two really good places just closed mm. not too long ago alamode closed over mm. in nottingham plaza and then you just saw that peach tree closed yeah so that maybe helps his business yeah you know and i don't know why those places I, you know they both had some challenges with staffing from what i understand yeah you know? I, I think david had a great staff dave david <laughs> said big his, staff i mean you saw, saw a picture yeah. of everybody yeah and his staff i went in there one time <clears throat> to get it because i th- i thought uh, that they had the best chicken sandwich in Syracuse, yeah. bar none. I they mean, got a really good uh, uh, beef brisket sandwich too. Yeah, yeah. that's your, I've only had the beef brisket. Thing. Okay, yeah. I would go there to get the chicken. The chick, you know, but it was just it was messy because it was yeah. dipped in honey. Yeah, but it was just delicious. But I walked in there one time because I wear this shirt every single day of my life. Yeah, and um, and I walked in and they were like, "What are you doing here?" You know, like his staff. <laughs> they were like, they were like. You know, you work there, yada yada yada, and they all, you know, all the staff recognized me, you know, and all that oh, kind of stuff. Cool. So it was great. But, um, yeah. So he said it was the space, which that space did suck. Yeah. Um, at least if you're trying to do like, you know, get the sit down and all that kind you of. You think stuff. you'll really open again, or? I don't know. A lot, a lot of, people, of people said that. Yeah. I know. Uh, what was the place downtown? Brian Prince owned. Uh... Oh God, they got they had really good reviews in the beginning too. Uh... Oh God. That uh, did really well downtown. I can't remember. It was a deli or a oh, what the hell was the name of it? Paladino's Deli. Oh, okay. Yeah, they did really well yeah. downtown too. And then they, you I know, they, they didn't make it. Yeah. yeah. But my son and his his girlfriend, which but when are you airing the podcast? A couple weeks. So it it will be his fiance tomorrow because he's asking wow. her to marry him tomorrow. Uh, my son and his fiance live over toward Jamesville, and when twice a week. They either go to Peachtree or to Alamode hmm. for sandwiches, wow. and now they don't have those places to go to. That's so awful. you know it kind of blows. Yeah, so. I'm so. sure Peachtree is something. If you, you've, well, you've been there. Peachtree, well, just once. Yeah, Peachtree is the perfect spot that you could franchise out. It's a the great model. Yeah, it's a great yeah. name. It's got great yeah. service, great food, great staff, like great decor and layout and everything. That is one thousand percent. A model that you could build multiple yeah. locations off of, and do all of them would do well. Um, so, do I think he'll reopen? Probably. Do I? Okay. Th- part of me says no because so many people say, "Well, one day we'll be." Yeah, you know. gonna, it's hard, man. People, people, they watch the restaurant network, and they, you know, yeah. this is my big thing over the last twenty plus years is they see the restaurant network. They're working at a job that they may not like, it might not seem glamorous or sexy, and they see, you know. Gordon Ramsay going in and, and, and doing a remodel of a restaurant, and they think, oh, my God, I want to do that because it's sexy. Or they watch this food show, and there's so much cool food, and they go, oh, my God, I could do this in a minute, yeah. and they want to do it. I have a friend right now who's trying to looking to take over a spot, which I hope he doesn't do because he'll lose, <laughs> he'll lose money. Um, and, and they go into it not knowing anything about the business, and they lose money because it's sexy. And that's, yeah. They think it's sexy, and it's, it's not sexy. Working seven days a week. 12 hours a day isn't sexy. Not having health insurance, not having life insurance, not having vacation days, that's not sexy. Yeah. You know, and, and knowing at the end of the week that everybody but you gets paid first yeah. isn't sexy. No. And But, you know. It's it's funny to think, <clears throat> you know, I know I've said this story a thousand times, but I'm thinking back to, like, the restaurant that I met when I first started Eat Local New York. And, In Syracuse? Yeah. What was your first? The first restaurant that I met, the owner that I met that I, where I was like, oh, fuck, I have to do something, was, um, well, I, I don't want to say her name. Um, I'll tell you off air. But because okay. um, she's still oh. in business. 
Oh, wow. And she was nice? It was good? Oh, yeah. It was a great... Ex- I mean, so I had the social media company, and a friend had said, you need to go meet with her. She needs help. And so okay. I went and met with her. Do you still do business with her? Uh, yeah. Okay. She's still in business. Um, but you don't still do her social media? No. I never okay. did. Oh, okay. So I met with her. I gave her some quick advice on like, hey, like I looked at her Facebook, and these are this is seven years ago, so... yeah. Yeah. Social media was completely different. So I looked at her Facebook. It was like, I would do this, I would do this, I would do this. But there you go. You can do it. You can pay me to do it, but you can do it. Um, and she was Great like, business model for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of like you. I mean, you don't really... No, I don't, don't charge. Show. I would never charge any. Yeah. My wife tells me, oh, my God, you should charge everybody. And pe- people have friends would say, oh, my God, bud, we would pay. I'm not charging anybody. Right. I, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. You know? Um, but so, yeah. I, I And yeah, anyway, so... Uh, so I told her what to do. She's like, how much do you charge? I told her, which back then it was really nothing. And she said, well, I can't afford it. I just spent my last $3,000 on a Clipper magazine ad. And I was like, oh my God. Well, seven years ago, it wouldn't have been as bad as now, but nobody should use print advertising now at all. Any, no print advertising. Not in a restaurant. No, my God, no, my God, no. And again, I gotta be careful. I'm not trying to criticize any of my people that I'm friends with that do, that sell print advertising, but that's especially since COVID happened and people yeah. are moved more inside. You, you can't, print advertising doesn't work. Well, so, so anyway, so I said to her, I was like, well, has it come out yet? She's like, yeah, it came out last month. I was like, well, how much did you get from it? Nothing, not one ad. And she was like, and honestly, I'm about to close. Like I have, so, and her story was she worked, she was a branch manager at a bank, made a great income, great living insurance, all nine, loved to cook for family, made great food, her friends always told her, you've got to open a restaurant. You would crush it. you got to open a restaurant. I'm trying restaurant. to think if I know. i got to know this person, right? You've probably ran into him, yeah. but you don't, I, don't, I, know, I know you don't work with him. Okay. And so um, so she did. She decided to quit her job, got a, <sighs> like mortgaged her house, got the money. Oh, my God. And she did make that item really well, and she still does, but that's all she knew how to do. And, and so she picked the like maybe the worst location for a restaurant in Syracuse, Terrible name, no advertising, no had no idea how to buy food, none of that kind of stuff. And six months into having it, she was out of business. So, what? but I thought you said she's still in business. Well, she was out of business in that, and then like she took a year off, and then she got a food truck and bounced back. Okay. Um, same concept and everything. But she's doing a food truck now. She's doing a food truck now. Uh, um, I might not know her then. Yeah. So, so that's why I started Eat Local because it, it, when I was doing when I was met with her and I left, I was thinking to myself. I want to be able to one day have a following that I could say, hey, I just had a great meal here. You should go there. And I could go send 100 customers to a restaurant that needs nice. help. Nice, right, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's why. Kind of like what, uh, oh, my God, I can't, I'm having a brain fart. What's her name that does the eat, uh, Syracuse Eating Club? Oh, Alicia. Alicia, she's awesome. Yeah. It's great that she does that. That's yeah. really cool. And I don't yeah. think she makes, she's not... That's her, is that her total business? No, she has a full time job. Yeah, but that, yeah. she she's not doing it to make money. I don't think really. It, but she makes money. Yeah. But it's not her driving force behind it, or is it? Uh, I don't, you know, I've never talked to her about if she wants that to be her full time thing one day. She's she's expanded it. I'm really you know, four years ago, you, I would see Instagrammers pop up, and four years ago, I would get more pissed off as they did. You know, because I'm like, because the Syracuse is small. We don't need that many yeah. food Instagrammers. You know. And, um, and so I'd be like, Jesus Christ, now they're, and you'd see them pop up. They'd be around for like a few months or a year. And then they would just be not, I don't see her. I don't do the gram. I'm on there once in a while. If I see my, something from my son or his, you know, girlfriend or Kim, my wife or metabolic where she goes, yeah. but I don't, I don't get on Instagram. Yeah. But the thing but she's on Facebook, I see that she's on Facebook. The things that have impressed me, and I've said this to her, the things that I'm really impressed with Alicia and Nicole and Ashley from Coast to Coast and yeah, they're Danielle awesome from people, Wanderlust man. as they've been very consistent. They, they've been doing it for years. You know, Saver Cues is, or is, is, you know, she's been around for a year or two now, but she's active and helping restaurants and she's doing a great job. Um, but they've hung around. Most of them do it for a little bit and then just follow. Yeah, they've they've, been, how and, long has Alicia been doing it, you think? I think she's been around for four years now. I went years. to one, maybe two events that she did, and it was surprising to me. I've lived my whole life here. 
my son and I went to the one they had at Coleman's. Yeah. And uh, there was like 40 people. It was a Christmas party one. And oh, they were doing yeah. gifts. And they had stuff for sale. And we bought some tickets for some swag and that kind of stuff. But there was like 40 people. I didn't know a single fuck. Only fucking person I knew was Dennis <laughs> Coleman. I didn't know a single. I'm like, what are the chances that I go to an event where people are eating out? Yeah. And I don't know a single person. It was kind of crazy. Yeah. Maybe I'm not as popular yeah. as I think I am. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. No, she does a phenomenal job. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I was I wanted to circle back to yeah. like the local versus franchise thing is like you made a Facebook post recently. Uh, I got uh, called out. Yeah, that's bullshit. No, my, no, it's not bullshit. I, listen, I'm it's just not saying. bullshit the way it happened though. Okay, I, it, you may think it's bullshit, but uh, this guy was a friend of mine. What what I did like about it is the way the world is today. Somebody, what'd you say? Those two people blasted you. Fuck you. I hope you die. Yeah. He could have put that. Yeah, he didn't. He sent me a message on the phone and said, Bud, could you give me a call? He called me and said, look, man, it's not in my place, but I just want to let you know something. And he goes, I listen to your podcast. We, he comes to the Breakfast Club. You've met him. Mm-hmm. He's, an, he's a really nice guy, he's very supportive. And he said, look, I, I'm a multi-level manager at uh, a yeah. particular chain in Syracuse. I just want to let you know that what you said isn't true. And, part, and I've said this thing for years. It's my story is like, look, when there's you know, an independent restaurant is part of a community, and that community it sometimes needs help. You know, maybe your son or your daughter is playing soccer or softball or something, and they need somebody to sponsor the team and put Santangelo's or Tassone's or Joey's on a on a jersey. You go and they sponsor you. Right. If if there's a tragedy and you know there's a car accident where somebody's injured or there's cancer or something for somebody in the community, you go to those independents and you ask for a gift card, and they give all the time. Yeah. And I and my my pitch had always been or my story had always been, and then. When that happens, somebody's got to make a dining out decision on a Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and they go to the chains. Yeah. Why don't you go to the independents? Because I, I always said, there isn't a Mr. Olive Garden, there isn't a Mrs. Applebee's, and they don't contribute. Well, that's wrong. And, and this individual pointed that out to me. You know, the place that he works last year at corporately gave out $10 million mm. last year. The local Applebee's here, who he's ha- he happens to be friends with the local people at, at, at Applebee's, they give all the time. He gives all the time. They do give. And they, the point he made that was well as well is, Look, man, so you're going to work in food service. You can work at the Brasserie or you can work at, at Olive Garden. You know, okay, it'd be great that you go work at the Brasserie, but there's nothing wrong with working at the Olive Garden. They're employing people. People sure. work there. I don't want to criticize somebody or demonize somebody because they happen to have a job at Applebee's. Without a doubt. So that's why I put what out what I did. No, I get that. And, and he didn't bastardize me. He didn't blast me on Facebook. Yeah, so. and I'm not, say, I'm not bringing it up because I'm saying, oh, Bud shouldn't have posted that. Right. And, and, and I know who you're talking about, and I do, and he's a great guy. He is, yes. And, and I agree with, you know, he follows us, and he comments on stuff from time to time, and he's a great supporter. Yeah. Um, and that's awesome that they do those things. You know, I had Marie from Good Eats and Sips on uh, not too her. long ago, uh, Don and uh, Marie Agate. And, um, oh, Don Agate. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yep. And uh, Marie is his wife. And so... Uh, Marie was on. You're gonna love that podcast, by the way. Really? Oh, Why? You're gonna love it. Marie's Marie's hilarious. Oh my gosh! Extremely. Maybe I should get her for this other podcast. I you know. should actually. Really? You know what? No, you need to get both of them. Really? You oh, well, I'm ch- friends with Don on Facebook. You yeah. should get both of them at the same time because that yeah. we're gonna film a reaction video with Don to Marie's podcast on my when, show. Text me and tell me when it comes out. I will. Yeah. Um, you, the only ch- ch- uh, hitch is you have to get them on a Monday. It's the only day they're closed. That's the only day we do ours. Perfect. Yeah. Our, our competing podcast. Yeah, you should definitely get them. Oh wow! On. Yeah. Wow. Cool. At, at the same is she time. just funny or? Marie's hilarious. Uh, Marie's intelligent. She knows what she's doing in food service. Cool. Um, uh, Love she's, to. Yeah, she's from Montreal. Oh, so, nice. She's got know. the accent. Uh, a little bit. I thought she was Swedish at first. Oh my uh, god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but. Uh, <laughs> I always thought she was Swedish for some reason. She's got like, you know, blonde hair. She just looks, you know, yeah, sweet. But yeah. anyway, so um, uh, very intelligent person when it comes to restaurants, but hilarious. And uh, it's the most, it's the only, it's the, the podcast I have talked to the least on. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And uh, anyways, she was, you know, but she was telling a story how she worked in Olive Garden, for Olive Garden <laughs> as a manager for a few years and, you know, how much that taught her. And and I agree a thousand percent. Corporate positions and chains um, have their shit locked down a lot more so than a local restaurant does. And there's very few local restaurants that are actually going to run their restaurant like a legitimate business. True. You know, in terms of like, yeah. hey, we have HR, we have this covered, we have this covered, we have this covered. You know, Michelle at the Brasserie, 
um, as, as we've had our disagreements, but Michelle at the Brasserie and Nora do, I would say from what I've personally experienced, the best job of managing their staff. Of- they hired an HR guy. He's a really good guy too. We had him on our podcast, but our podcast didn't make it because it yeah. there was technical problems. So we have to have him on again. But he he knows his shit and he yeah. comes in. They do weeklies and monthlies where he brings the staff in and they they go over and have game plans. It's really really good. And most yeah. places don't do it, unless you're a chain. Yeah. And so I would I would go into the brasserie and see Michelle sitting down and having a meeting with a staff person talking about okay it's and I like overheard one day okay it's our monthly meeting and we're doing this and I was like holy shit I've yeah I don't know of anybody else I'm sure there are I don't know of anybody else in Syracuse I've ever seen do that at a restaurant yeah. um, and so corporate restaurants are going to have those training systems is in place. big a lot of them yeah you, there's a, you know I I came from corporate I I, I yeah. worked at my mom's place my mom managed a bunch of bars when I was in in college high school elementary school you know and uh got out and then when I got out of college I was I didn't want to work in a restaurant but I got a a job at Pizza Hut I was a Pizza Hut manager then I left there and went to Ground Round I was a Ground Round manager they had a very structured game plan of how to train you trained yeah. you were a role you did that role until you tested out that you were mm-hmm. proficient at that role and then you went on to the next role and it was very structured and when you got done you knew everything about the restaurant mm-hmm. and chains don't do that yeah. I mean independents can't do that they don't have the time or the resources to do that yeah you know so I think that those, that those are great aspects to a yeah. chain restaurant you know they have their national branding down which is phenomenal but, so why are you upset with this individual for everybody is who they are you know like it, right. like there's enough different types of people in the world that every viewpoint and thought and representation of sex and race and creed religion is covered Right. Yeah, for sure. Especially now, there's a lot more of them now. Right. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, there are. Yeah. Um, so I don't really, you know, whatever. I, I don't have to really wonder. I wonder if this group is represented. I can find the representation yeah, 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 you'll find somewhere. Some. Yeah. 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 You, <laughs> Bud Laura, are the champion of, of a local independent, yeah, yeah. independent restaurant. You're never going to see. I know having against, but you're never going to see me in an Applebee's. Never right. going to happen. Not out of garden. I'm not going to. No offense to this individual's yeah. corporate structure. I, I'm never going to order from him. Yeah. That doesn't mean I don't like him or his staff or whatever. But I'm just not going to do that. Right. It doesn't, I, I don't, it doesn't demonize me for not going. I don't believe in his eyes. Yeah. Maybe in some people's it does, but I, I don't care. Yeah. You know. So you are that champion. Right. And 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 you know. Oh, uh, I think I see where you're headed here. Yeah. Like you don't have to, in my opinion, which you know whatever, you don't have to worry about not representing or not talking about all the work that changes. That's great. I see what you're saying. That's wonderful. Someone else can go work for a national chain or a group of national chains to help them save money, and they can talk about that. Bud Laura is the local champion of the local restaurant owner. It's like our breakfast club thing. Remember when we first started and we're giving money out and doing things, and then I I just I thought naively – you, I think you were more seasoned in that space to know what was going to happen. Is I said, oh, my God, everyone's going to fucking love what we do. Mm. And they didn't. People were like, oh, man, the cooks are the ones that make the food, man. You should do one for the cooks because the cooks – without the cooks, there wouldn't be any waitresses, man. The cooks need the money. Like – man, I'm sorry. And, I'm, which, which, and then, you, you know, you, I don't know it was you or somebody said, look, I finally said it to somebody that was blasting me about it. I said, look, man, I think that's a great fucking idea. <laughs> I think it would be awesome if you had one for cooks. Let me know when you start yours, and we'll contribute. But right now, this is what we do, yeah, and the way we do it. So, but yeah. you're right. Somebody else, let somebody else represent that. Right. Good point. Yeah. So, I, you know, I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with you know or anything like that. I just when I saw you post it, and I know that you're very <laughs> sensitive to that kind of stuff. If you feel like, you know, it, which which I I'm not. You know, but you're also a lot more confident in who you are and what you do than I am. And what? what? Really? You don't yeah. think you're confident in what you do? Uh, no, I think I am, but um, to a certain extent. But you know, you know what it's like. It's like when you see like the bully isn't. You know, it's not just like the bully who's like picking on everybody. It's is really, probably more insecure than the, the right. kid they're picking on. Yeah, you yeah, know? for sure. For That's sure. kind of how I am. So if I hear that somebody's like like that person who says you suck, yeah. like my response, I want to be like, yeah, go fuck your. You know, I want to yeah. go after them. Yeah. Based on insecurity, someone corrects you or you're set. Or, well, I, I, you know. if 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 I didn't respect him, I would have probably said "fuck you." 
Yeah. But I respect the guy, and he, you know, look, man, I, I'm 59 years old. I'm having not everything I've done in my life has been perfect. You make yeah. mistakes, and sometimes it's good that somebody can say, "Hey, you know, Anthony, maybe you should try to do this or try to do that." Yeah. You know. So yeah, yeah, you. you Breakfast Club, great idea. We talked about it, whatever, and and uh, I, you know, we're kind of figuring out what to do. But it makes way more sense now to let everybody know, to find a way to have somebody contribute that doesn't go, even if it's five dollars. Yeah, all that was not something we were going to do in the beginning, but you kind of convinced me that maybe that's the way to go, and it's been working better. Yeah, so. which remind me to take care of that before yeah. you leave. What's that? Switch the thing over for you. Oh, from it's account. like twenty dollars. Yeah, twenty five dollars or something. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, but we got a couple hundred bucks of of contributions last. At the last event of people that didn't go, oh, that's, that's cool. Great. Yeah, that's awesome. That's cool. Yeah, uh, one of them was, you know, Joe from Home Team Pub was hammered and gave me a hundred dollar bill, but <laughs> <laughs> which is great. Maybe I need to go drinking with those guys more. But <laughs> that's hilarious. Joe is Joe is a oh my god, guy. he'd be great. We got to have him. On, he'd be great on a podcast. He would be a he's great a trip, one. but he's yeah. you got to warn people. He's kind of got a dry. Yes, he does. He's wicked dry sense of humor. You don't know whether he's kidding or not. So he, yeah, I do. I do not know him well enough yet to figure it <laughs> out. Um, there's been a couple times where I'm like sitting there staring at him, and then he gives me a smirk, yeah. and I'm like, "Oh, that was hilarious." Yeah. So uh, it, you know, a rash of restaurants have been closing lately. Yeah. We kind of talked about a la mode, peach tree. I know there's a lot more. I keep blanking. On Somebody else are. just closed too. I can't remember who it was, but I saw in the paper I posted. Uh, cobblestone out in Geneva is for sale. Really wow. cool place. It's like an old frame house that's for sale. Yeah. I know uh, this will probably post in a couple of weeks, but yeah. Joey's has been sold. Somebody's going into... Somebody oh, bought Joey's? Somebody bought Joey's. Wow. Do you know who so, it was? Uh, I know who it is, but I can't say okay. because I don't want to fuck up the deal, yeah. right? So, But uh, yeah. they're in the in the transition Wow. thing. And what's nice is, you know, the, the, I know Joe and Rick. I've known Rick forever. Rick and I have known each other literally forever. Yeah. And Joe and I have been friends for a while. And uh, it's good. It's good to see the transition happen yeah. because he, they've been working. Rick's, Joe's been working really hard, and it's time for him to make a to separate out. But they're having some challenges with a, uh, getting their liquor license because mm-hmm. there's just paperwork bogged down. There's not enough people. So they reached out and said, hey, man, is there anybody you know? And uh, I reached out to John Katko, who was very nice to quickly reply back that it's not his space, yeah. that we need to talk to one of the state senators, which is like Rachel Mayer, John Mannion. I have a great relationship with John. I reached right out to John. Seconds later, he replied back, hey, this is the contact person. Get a hold of them immediately. And I told them you're going to be contacting them, and they'll get right on it. Wow. So that's pretty cool to have some of our, you know, even though New York State seems to be New York City and Albany, and they kind of forget us in the middle. Yeah. But uh, it's nice to have representation here, and we need that representation. For sure. For, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I mean, you know, not to shift gears, but it's probably the most important thing that a person could be. When it comes to politics, yeah, I mean, yes, the president, whoever the president is, is important as we're seeing now. Yeah. Um, but it's even more important who your local, you know, assemblymen, you know, uh, city councilmen, your yeah. mayors, you know, whoever those men and women are, those are far more important elections and that I, affect our daily lives. I don't know how you feel. You're younger than me, but I'm not in politics, never been. First time I ever voted in an election was the presidential election when Biden ran. Who'd you vote for? <laughs> I did not vote for Joe Biden. Uh, I felt, I, I, well, I, I made my vote, and, and uh, my wife voted for Biden, so her fucking vote's canceled. <laughs> so, you know, but, uh, and, and that's what it is. And so he's the president, he's my president, because yeah. he's, he's the president. But um, uh, locally here, I don't care if somebody's Democrat or Republican. It doesn't matter to me. I, don't, I didn't even know that John Mannion was a Democrat. He had to tell me. Hmm. I don't know what, what a Ryan McMahon is. I didn't know what John Katko was. I just know that those people were people that I reached out to and formed a relationship with because of us here, because we needed help. And every one of those people responded. Yeah. So it, it doesn't matter to me, red or blue. Yeah. It's the person. So yeah, that's, fu- that's I don't know if that's the same with you or. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, back in the day when I was first, you know, when I, you know, I grew up in a f- fairly Christian home. So back in the day, I just knew abortion was wrong and vote for anybody who was against it. Um, yeah. And then. Huh. Yeah. Getting older, you know, I've changed my mind. Um, you know, I will say the first Democrat I ever voted for was Khalid Bay for mayor last year. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, but I don't know him at all. Yeah. I can't say. We talked about that once before. Yeah, I actually yeah. thought he was going to beat Ben. So did Ben's I. been supportive, and every time I've ever reached out to him for something, he's been very, very replies fast, quickly. He's been supportive. Yeah. So Yeah, I think Mayor Walsh is a great, is a good person. Yeah. Um, 
you know, it's easy. It's really easy to kind of like armchair quarterback and say, man, there's a lot of shit that I would have done differently. Um, of course, because you, you have the uh, the um, advantage of knowing what happened already, right? Yeah. And how it went and what the, what you could have done, yeah. Yeah. But, um, but and, and God only knows what it's like to actually to truly be the person that's in charge in, in that position. What do you think the hardest part of the job is? Um, or what, do you, what do you think the hardest job would be for you if you were in that role? Not just in general, but for mm, you. That's a good question. If I was the mayor of Syracuse, what would be the hardest part? Um, or the, or probably, the county exec. Yeah, I think, the, I think the hardest part would be making decisions that are going to benefit the next... I won't say the next generation, but the next five, ten years after I'm out of the position, but having to make those decisions today. Like Ryan, you know, with Micron, he's gonna, not going to be the county executive no. by the time that the benefits of that— be the fucking that, president of the United States yeah. by then, um, <laughs> you, know, but yeah. you know? By the time that the benefits of that facility opening benefit Onondaga County, he'll be gone. He won't be in the position. Um, and, and yeah, he probably will be at a larger state role, if not national role, but— I think for, I mean, realistically, knowing me, that wouldn't be the hardest part. The hardest part would be like waking up every day and trying to get through the weeds. But I think for them, probably the most grace needs to be extended to know that, you know, they have to make decisions that are going to benefit, you know, like future generations, not just tomorrow. Yeah. Mayor Walsh. I mean, yeah, the, the road construction and everything that they've been doing the past two years and, and a part of which has led to the demise of, you know, the Brinewell Eatery. Amongst yeah, other things, yeah, 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 and some of downtown, things. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but um, but that's a decision. Hey, we're gonna stop, con- you know, traffic here for a summer. We're gonna put this these pipes in that are gonna benefit the next fifty years. Yeah, that sucks when you're getting criticized. And well, having- there's my part. So, what would you? Th- the the hardest part would me. Um, I would hope to think that I have enough. Well. Uh, if I was ever in any one of those roles, the big thing for me is, like I do now, is, look, man, I don't know how to bricks a soda machine. Yeah. I don't know how to, what, how you fix a dish machine or what dish machine is better or worse. I don't know how to, um, why this paper product is better than this. I don't know the difference between surveying something and not surveying something. But I know somebody who knows. Right. That's an expert there. So that's my role is to put somebody in touch. So if I was in that role, I would have enough experts around me to solve the problems that need to be solved. Yeah. My problem would be is I do not understand how John Kako, John Mannion, uh, Ryan, three closest people I have here, how do they deal with the criticism? How do they deal? Ryan told us when he was on our pod- podcast, he has had people – physically try to assault him. Oh, I'm sure. How? Yeah. When, 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 when something good is happening, you see it's going good, something's going well, and there's always this person that says, I hope you fucking die. I hope your kids die. I hope your wife gets cancer. They're saying this kind of stuff to people. It's because Why? People, well, because, I mean... Because it's, it's anonymous now, but... Well, that's part of it, but a, a bigger part of it is just because it's the culture that we now have. I, don't, I won't say that, like, it's... That, that these people always existed and social media has just given them the voice, because I think that's part of it. But I think also people have just gotten worse. I mean, I don't think, yeah, I don't I think humanity has gotten better. I think humanity has gotten then worse. Then you need to have John Tomino on your podcast. Yeah, I because know. Because he, <laughs> he is, it makes, I, look, I, I think I'm a good person. Yeah. I, 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 I try to do well. I try to put my, like my grandmother used to say, she, she would... She would live her day of waking hours so that when she put her head on her pillow at night, she could sleep. That's what I try to do now. Maybe I didn't do it when I was 25. Maybe I was falling on my pillow drunk. But, you know, now I try to do that. And then you look and see the things that John does, and you're like, I'm a fucking shitty person compared to him. But you you, you mentioned something, because Michelle asked him. He was on our podcast. Michelle asked him a really good question. I didn't realize that she has some anxiety problems of, of, like, you know, can be overwhelmed. She's 30 years old. She has a lot going on, yeah, single okay. mom, it, the, the business business. That's a lot. And she said, how do you get up every day and know that, yeah, you 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 saved five people today, but there's 50 more. And where you mm-hmm. had five people that you saved, there's seven more taking them place. How do you just not feel overwhelmed? Whelmed. And he said, one more day. Yeah. One more person, one more day, every day. So my goal today is to save one more person. Mm-hmm. And I go to bed and just, you know what? Tomorrow's one more day. So I go to bed tonight thinking, okay, I'm going to have a good day tomorrow. One more day, one more day, one more person. And yeah. that's how he lives. You know, you know, and that's hard. Yeah. I'm going to share a story which is way off topic and okay. super Christian. <clears throat> okay. Hyper Christian. 
the hyper most, Christian? Oh. The most Christian story I could ever share okay. with you. When I was when I were, lived in Texas, you know, I worked at a mega church. Yep. I grew up in the type of Christianity that believes, and I still believe this, that um, the Bible it's we're not it's not just meant for like Sunday morning and then one day heaven, but it's meant like the Lord's Prayer, you know, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So the prayer is saying whatever is in heaven let it exist on earth. Right, okay, I can... So if we believe that, like, in heaven, depression doesn't exist, sorrow, you know, pain... Then why aren't you allowing that to exist here? Right. Good point. Now, with that, the only command, you know, the four books of the Bible were that Jesus existed. The only direct command, like, thing that he ever told followers of him to do was heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, like, mend the brokenhearted. He didn't say, hey, go to church as I go to church. Right. Or he talked about tithing and give unto Caesar and tax, you know, that kind of stuff. And he gave a lot of great examples of, um, you know, like talking to the woman at the well. It was a pro, you know, yeah, all that yeah, kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, right? yeah. But the only direct things that he ever said, hey, if you're going to be a follower of me, you're going to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out the demons, mend the broken heart. Right. So. So that so what my the version of Christianity that I grew up with it was people who are sick can be prayed for today and be healed miraculously just as they were in the stories of the Bible when Jesus was okay born. okay so having that reference <laughs> uh, we're in Los Angeles on like a, a youth we took the youth group from the church to Los Angeles how old are you then I was like twenty seven twenty eight somewhere. Or, what am I, 36 now? So it was like uh, 26, 27. Oh, wow, okay. Not and that long ago then, no, really. Yeah, 10 years ago. And uh, and so um, when we were there, we were there doing like, it was like a missions trip, but to Los Angeles. I mean, I took a group of kids to Skid Row. And oh, wow, like, wow. You know, I mean, I'm were talking... Were these at-risk kids or no. were they just Christian kids? Yeah. I mean, we had kids in there that were like, lived in poverty in Texas and kids that were like millionaires. So, um, and so we're walking up and down Skid Row, handing out like hygiene packs to like the homeless and, you know, seeing like every bit of craziness. There was this one guy that we stopped and we're talking to who was homeless, who lived on Skid Row. And he's like, he stops. I had like a group of 12 teenagers with me and, um, you know, I'm like in protect, you know, making sure nothing yeah, happens yeah. while we're trying to like help these people. And this one guy stops us, and he's like talking to the kids. He's like, "Look, he's like your one. De- he's like your life can be one decision away from ending up like me." You wow, know? a lot of pressure. How old are these kids? These kids are anywhere from twelve to sixteen. Oh, that's a lot of pressure. You know, he's like, he's like, it's one decision. He's like, you do that drug, you get, into, you know, you continue to make these bad decisions. He's like, but you're one decision away from ending up addicted, in jail, you know, whatever. And so, um, anyway, so. While we were there, uh, we were doing, like, these outreaches where we try to, like, tell people about Jesus and, you know, lead them to the Lord, quote-unquote. Um, anyway, so one of the things, there were these two, these two kids. It turned, I thought they were much older. It turns out they were, like, 18 years old. One of them was Muslim. The other one, I forget the name of the re- religion, starts with a Z, but they believe that they were, Zenism like... Zionism or something? Something yeah, like that. that. Yeah, yeah. They believe that they were, like, the first ever religion. And so, uh, pointless to to explain how we were interact talking to them, but I'm talking to them and, um, for like an hour and a half and we're in, uh, I forget the town, like the big pier town where like the Ferris wheel is and all that kind of stuff, but, um, right on the ocean, but sitting there talking to them. And a lot of the conversation is just about, um, their, uh, their criticisms of Christianity which most are valid, you know, like, you know, what about this? What about that? What about this? And you could do likewise to theirs. Yeah, for sure. But the point is, like, you know, like, they're just like, you know, like, they're kind of, these 18-year-olds are talking to me with, like, pity that I'm a Christian. Oh, wow. Not like, not like ragging on me, but just like, you could tell they're sitting there thinking to themselves. Poor you. Yeah. Right. Oh, this guy is an idiot, you know, sort of a thing. So, anyways... The version of Christianity that I believe in is that, again, Jesus is real. People can get healed today, just like they were in the Bible. And so 
long story short, one of the kids was in this motorcycle accident and couldn't, like two weeks prior, couldn't turn his wrists. And so at the end of the conversation, we, he winds up getting prayed for and healed. And this kid is like turning his wrists like this. And he's like, you don't get it. I couldn't do this before. And at the end of like this, in this like wild interaction, they, these two kids wind up becoming Christians. Like they oh, well. okay. were like, I forsake, you know, I'm not a Muslim right. anymore. I'm right. a Christian. I still follow them on Instagram to this day. Oh my gosh. And wow. see them. And it is absolutely wild to think, to like see him on Instagram. You know, one of them is now like joined the Air Force and he's, you know, serving. Oh, that's pretty country. cool to have, still have a relationship. Yeah. yeah. But it's wild to think like, you know, for whatever reason, that's, you know, tiny on the scale of what John Tomino does. Um, but it's just crazy. You ever hear Ricky Gervais's? No. You know Ricky Gervais is? Yeah. He's a complete atheist, yeah. agnostic atheist. He doesn't believe in whatever. Right, yeah. And uh, he's on Stephen Colbert, and Stephen Colbert is very Catholic. And he asked Ricky Gervais, you know, what do you believe? Like, do you, you know, do you, do you have any doubts? He said, no, I have no doubts. He goes, I don't believe at all. And he goes, I just, you know, he goes, so Ricky Gervais, and I, I'm paraphrasing, he goes, so you believe in Christianity? You're Catholic? Yes. He goes, how many, do you know how many religions there are? So I don't know, it was 300 or so. Wow. There's 300 religions in the world. So Buddhist and Zionism and whatever, what you can be yeah. a religion. He goes, so you're not, when you say you're a Christian, you believe in Christianity, but you don't believe in Zionism and Buddhism yeah. and whatever. So, so basically, you believe in one religion. You don't believe in the other 299. I'm Ricky Gervais. I just believe in one less religion than you do. <laughs> Which is kind of funny, yeah. you know, in a kind of a way. Yeah. He's, he's right. Yeah. He just believe in one less religion than you do. Yeah. So, so yeah. but he's, you know, so. Yeah. But that's a topic we probably shouldn't. Well, speaking of which, I, I, I'm starting um, local religion, New York. Yeah, and, uh, I, I would new, probably not be a, <laughs> a my, my, such, my, my, my uh, feeling on that is, look, it's not my place to, to beat up your belief system. Yeah. Whatever makes you a better person, whatever you have to believe in to get up and do good in the world, you can be whatever religion or whatever practice you want to p- yeah. do. Same with me, man. I have a belief system, and, and it's my belief system, and it makes me the person I am, and good. Right. Whether, wh- and your belief system makes you the person you are, good. Yeah. Now, we have people that we don't like, yes. and <laughs> they could be part. They could believe my belief system or yours, and we still don't like them. Right. So, you know, yeah. there's a lot of those people. Yeah, so. you don't have to be in my club for me to like you. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, I mean, I, you know, obviously you've been doing what you do for many years. Over you know? 20 years, yeah. Yeah. Crazy to think that. And, you know, while you do a shit ton for people in restaurants, completely free of charge, yeah. Um, obviously you make money from it. Yeah. But I know we've had these conversations privately, but, you know, how do you and, and where do you draw the line on... Of to help? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you should talk to my wife about that. <laughs> I guess it comes down to, uh, I don't know, there's there's certain people that that I, I consider friends, and we've had this conversation with the certain people around. There's people I consider a friend and, and a good friend and that I've known a long time, but I probably would never work with, only because they're, the way they do business is not the way I would like to do business. Would I still help them if they called and asked for help? I'd probably give them some suggestions, but I'm probably not going to be adamantly going out of my way to help them. Only because they're, they're, the way they run their business or their operation is me first. Yeah. You know, and I bring, you know, there's a lot of people you could bring up, but I bring David Hoyne up a lot. David Hoyne owns a business. His, his business is Kitty Hoyne's. The goal of that business is to make enough money to pay his staff and him and his life. And he works really hard to do that. But if somebody down the street needs help, He's going to help them, even if it's at the detriment of his restaurant, because yeah. he wants everybody to be successful. Yeah. And that's the kind of guy I want to work with. So hmm. I, I guess the short answer is I'm probably not going out of my way to help those people. There's a couple people that we mentioned names of earlier that I'm just ignoring them right now yeah. because I, they're toxic. Yeah. I can't have toxic. I don't, I'm 59. I don't want toxic in my life, and they would take me down a toxic path. What age, like when did you, because I'm sure earlier in your life you weren't thinking like... No, no, no. You know, when she, I guess it's, I don't know, you have kids, you, you, uh, maybe it's, you get to a certain age, and uh, I was fortunate enough that I made very good money at what I did before. I was really good at it, and we, we made a lot of money. I don't need a lot of money. I know people in my family that need a lot of money and uh, to, to, to do the things they do, and they may be driven by money. 
cool. I'm not driven by that. We we have a nice house. We have nice cars. We get to go out and do stuff. We have money in our 401k, a lot less money with your president, but um, uh, they uh, with my wife's president. But uh, thank you. Very, uh, I just want to say thank you for clarifying that because yes. I did not vote for, for uh, President Biden. I voted uh, for Joe Jorgensen. I figured you would. Yeah. Even. But uh, uh, the only so I I uh, so I, I'm not driven by the money piece. Twenty years ago, I was driven more by the money piece, maybe. But I've always been of the thing of of uh, doing this consulting piece is it's got to be the same for you. Look, man, if somebody calls me and I go there and I help this person, I have enough, the, the way my business is structured, if I'm helping that person, somehow I'm going to get paid. might not be today, might not be tomorrow, it might be $100, but somehow I get paid, you know? Yeah. I, I have a, a I, I know your relationship with Gearhart's is kind of strained. <laughs> I have a relationship with Gearhart's. They're a great fill-in. I have a... a, a larger relationship with Johnston Paper and the Mays, who I've known for years out of, out of Auburn, and they do a very good job. But there's times they, especially during COVID, they can't fill in. Yeah. Garrett's has been a great second supplier. So today, Duskies didn't get their 9x9 fiber and their 9x6 fiber. Well, something happened. Yeah. Well, I can go to Gearhart's, pick it up, and bring it to them. And they, they're, they're, they're fulfilled. Do I make money off that? I probably spend more money in gas yeah. than I get in commissions from Gearhart. But having them available is a benefit to my yeah. client and my friends. So, Does it ever get overwhelming to you? Is there ever like, if I get one more phone call or one more text messages? Used to be when I was at Dining Alliance. It was, I was very unhealthy. I drank way more. I partied way more. I didn't exercise as enough. I, uh, I was not in a good place. I was very, uh, my wife will tell you, I traveled a lot more. I'd be gone. And I hated leaving, mm. and I, I was so I was always pissed off two days before I had to go on a trip, mm. and I was just miserable. And then when I got back, I was always miserable because I'd find out what I missed. I was just miserable. Yeah. But they paid me a shitload of money, so mm. you know it's yeah. a catch. Yeah, I get that. When you're 36, right? 36. Yeah. When you're 36, 36. you kind of have to maybe look at the financial piece more because you're you're not, you, yeah. you know, you're not at a stage that somebody would be at 60. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I did that when I worked at Metro Mattress, took a phenomenal paying job, but the life balance was it, you miserable. Got, you got to balance it. Yeah. No toxic. I don't want anything toxic around. Yeah. So. I mean, you obviously, you know, I don't say this to like, you know, you know, give you a big head, but I'm sure that you understand, you know, how much you do for the local community uh, to a it certain was, extent. You're going to try to make me cry now? I, I st- you saw the thing. You didn't see it when John well, gave me that on. award. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, that's funny. When John pulled that out, I was, I was for the first time, and and any time I can remember, I literally didn't have it. I was like speechless. Yeah, I couldn't say anything. Started crying. It was really. It's nice to know. Look, yeah. it, it's you, Rebecca. Yeah. It's nice. You know, my wife. For the last 25 years, we were married. 20 years, we were married. Every day, we send each other a text, "Love you, love you," or so say, "Hey, miss you, miss you." Just a little thing that knows that you're you, somebody feels positive yeah. about you. Someday that's enough, man. And to get it, something like that is nice. To have somebody tell you that you you did a good job is nice. Yeah, for Maybe sure. Maybe it's the little boy in me that didn't have my my father or my stepfather telling me I was good. I don't know, but yeah. it's nice. To, and I have to be liked. Yeah. I need to be liked. I don't yeah. know why. <laughs> so, uh, is that because I yeah, I never hear. I've never. Uh, maybe one person. Uh, Who I want to know. I want to go fix it. No, I'm just kidding. No. Uh, but they, you know, once I once I told them I was working or hanging out with you, they fired me too. So, but uh, <laughs> but, um, but maybe I mean, and I, I don't say that to like highlight the one. I say that to you know, the, like, of the hundreds, you right. know, one person that's ever you know, either they don't know you or they're like great, phenomenal person. Oh, you know? That's cool. That's good to know. Yeah. Um, so is I wish I could say the same. <laughs> <laughs> and that's uh, I'm being honest I, yeah. you know there's for whatever reason you you have a different personality than me you you got to a place i think you said where where uh if somebody you got a three strike rule right yeah sometimes it's a two and a half strike or two strike rule they fuck it you're done and you're done with them yeah like done with them they're done yeah i mean i i don't know what i i know what it is but um i just i'm when it comes to that kind of like that kind of stuff i'm at any one given point, I'm willing to just walk away from it. I yeah. don't care how much money I'm making or anything like that. I'm willing to just be like, oh, it's done. I got to go find something else. Yeah. It's over. 
And, um, and I found that there's people, you know, listen, two years ago who I, two, three years ago who I was like, man, fuck them. I'm never going to work with them again. You're going to pay me enough money today. And then you go back. Yeah. Not go back to work with them, but go back to like, oh, hey, how's it going? You know, yeah. three years ago, if I, I would have been like that, you know, whatever. Well, I had that situation with Lock One. Mm. And, you know, yeah. I was presenting them with an opportunity for, for and, and going through a lot of work to get them to look at the cash discounting program, which I think everybody, I, I know you don't maybe agree with that, but I think everybody now should be doing it because it's a beneficial way for them to uh, save some money that they need to, 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 to need to save. And they had looked and looked and looked, and I brought them some opportunities that at, in hindsight weren't the right ones. And they chose one that is the right one. And I'm actually partnered with that company now, but it really pissed me off when they did it. Yeah. I felt... Slighted, I felt hurt, and I was like, fuck them. But now I look back, and I'm like, I can't say fuck them. I love that place. Yeah. We go there. My wife and I like to go. I'm not, and to be honest, if they made a bad decision, it's their bad decision. I can't hate them for making the decision that wasn't right. Right. So I come around a little. Yeah, so. for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely, I mean, listen, I see that. Is there any place in Syracuse you won't go no matter what? You uh, won't spend a dollar in? I'm sure if my wife listens to this, she's probably going to rattle off the 20 places I've mentioned over the years. But um, I probably wouldn't go back into the brasserie, not because of... I love the brasserie. Yeah. I mean, I really do. I mean, I, I know I comment on this often, but um, like on social and stuff, I think they've got the best chicken riggies of any place in Syracuse. Really? Without question. Really? Without question. Best um, chicken riggies? Without question. And they're not traditional... Chicken riggies or anything like that. Um, I just think that they are. Uh, are you a chicken riggies guy? So do you no. go out of your way to find chicken riggies? Not at all. But did but, you ever do a podcast about best chicken riggies? Yeah, Zach and I. When Zach and I were doing, you, the, would, what place did you go? We went like we would ask people what their favorites were. We had Francesca's. We had Possibilities, which were the ones in Syracuse. I've never had Possibilities. I've had Francesca's. They're very good. Yeah, if you ask people in Syracuse today. Who has the best chicken riggies? Like in Syracuse proper, um, I'm not talking like all of Central New York. People would say Francesca's and Possibilities would be like the, the top really? three without question. Um, I'm sure there's other places. But Basil Leaf, I've, great chicken riggies because the, the guy, yeah. here's why: the guy in the kitchen is a Utica guy. Yeah, best. Another place, Utica Pizza, Charlie Casino. Yeah, fucking great chicken riggies because they got the Utica recipe. I yeah. think maybe, and maybe that's what I like. Yeah, some so. of my favorite is um, Teddy's in Rome. Teddy's is the best chicken ch- yeah. chicken riggies I've ever had. You know, so good that Utica Rome has a a, a contest every year. Or they did have; they haven't done it in a while, but they yeah. have a contest every year for best chicken riggies. Yeah, and Teddy's won one, two, three, like four years in a row. Yeah, and then people stop. Yeah, entering. So they made Teddy's, Carlos and Brian, the fucking full time judges. So they can't yeah. compete, but they're the judge. I so. like I've been to Teddy's plenty of times. Yeah. That used to be the spot I would meet my my Rebecca and I would meet our in laws, her parents, for dinner. Because yeah. it's like the perfect halfway point. Yeah. I like the brasseries better. Really? And, and they're not traditional whatsoever. I've ne- I I've maybe had brasserie once. They do they just like they put banana peppers in it. I like which, the banana peppers. Yeah. yeah. Cider um, Mill has good ones too. Yeah. I haven't had them there. Yeah. Um, they don't do olives, which I know isn't like a must. I don't like must, the olives piece. That's probably why too. Yeah. But it's just I don't know what it is. What they do to them, I just think oh. that they're, they're my favorite. Really? Oh, Their wow. French fries are the best at a, at a sit-down they restaurant good in French Syracuse. Fries too. Um, the staff is great. Best Chrissy, burger. The I wouldn't say that's the best burger. It's no, a good and burger. Where, where, where oh, do you go? where is the best burger? Um, if I had to go for a best burger right now, that's like on the menu, readily available. Uh. Uh, see, I'm, I I will just cl- clarify. I'm a different style of burger person. So if I want a smash burger style, I'm going to Three Lives. Yep. If I want like a great regular, not a smash burger, um, I'm right today. I'd go to Danny's. Yeah. Oh, well, I've never had his burger. Um, Danny's did, Kyle does a really great job with that burger. He's got There's two I've never ones. had. We next time we go to lunch, we have to go to Three One Five. I mean, uh, to uh, Three Lives. Th- three Lives. Yeah. We have to. Yeah, John does a great job there. Um, he's a super, super good guy too. Yeah, yeah. So, and he uh, survived a lot of shit during COVID and other stuff. That yes, my so my I don't know if you'd call it a burger. It's a burger on the menu. It's a, called a steak burger. Okay. But my favorite French fries and my favorite favorite burger, fucking Orbacher's in Williamson. Williamson. Oh, I've never been there. Oh my god, it's 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 not the cleanest place. Yeah, it's not the newest place. All the prices are on the men on the thing. It's, it takes cash only. It's been there I don't know hundred years. Yeah, it's on one hundred and four between like uh, 
Walcott and Webster. Mm. Okay. It's been there forever, and it, everything's cash. Mm. They throw it on a paper plate. They cook it right there. The the ste- It's a steak burger. They okay. get it from a local place, and they do the yeah. – when they flatten it down, they put it on a grilled bun, mm. and the French fries are always crinkle cut, and the burgers are like $4.17, some weird amount, mm. everything is, but it's the best. Every time I'm close there, I have to go. Wow. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. That kind of reminds me of the place out in <laughs> Pompey that has like the $3 burger. What's the name of that burger? Oh, uh, uh, in the plaza. No, it's a standalone bar. It's like a yeah, yeah. It's a uh, uh, oh my god, oh my god. Yeah, Noxies. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Noxie just passed not too long ago. Oh, right? really? I think I think okay. his daughter's running it now, right? Okay. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Um, I've only been there once, and you know, was a little terrified to be in there. But uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. But uh, great. You know, I mean, not a great. It's the burger, Pompeii Mall. But, you know, they call that two bucks. Is. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Three bucks. Two. Used to be the sports page. That's before your time. The sports oh, really? page used to have the ninety-nine cent lunch. Oh really? You get a like a hamburger for ninety nine cents. You get a hot dog. You used to get like a, I think it was an order of nachos, but it was ninety nine cent lunch. That's wild. And people would go in back in the day, and uh, you get a ninety nine cent lunch, and you drink four fucking beers. Yeah, you know. So sports huh. page. That's pretty funny. Yeah, no, it's um, there's great there's people that do really good things in, in different ways, but uh, yeah, I mean, so if the restaurants that I just want to, and I, the only reason why I said I want to go into the brasserie is just because you know. It, I, like I said, I think there's so I have a lot of respect for them. I think it's the best. I think from what I've wit- personally witnessed, I'm sure there's others that do great jobs, but from what I've personally witnessed, restaurants that I've worked for, I don't know of any owners that manage their staff better, um, that hold their staff accountable and treat them well. That's a rarity. They well, you, they they've increased their business hugely for lunch and dinner mm. recently. Yeah, and they might not think this is a fact. Hopefully, they're listening to this because they have a new server who's just been killing it. Mm. I just talked to him the other day because we were in there doing something, and uh, this particular waitress is uh, the has got more five star reviews than in the short time she's been there full, you know, full time working there than any server that's ever worked there. Wow, it's Hannah. Michelle's sister. She's oh, freaking really? amazing. I've met yeah, Hannah. She's amazing. Her. She's yeah. amazing. That's awesome. So, um, yeah, and I shouldn't I shouldn't say that I would never go in there. That you know, I, I want to clarify that. If I was walking in there, I would feel very uncomfortable. Yeah, because um, you guys have a, a weird history. Yeah, but, but is there a place you like won't go? Uh, margaritas. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. Why? Um, oh wow. Well, when when we went there a couple of years ago, yeah, the owner said that the food wasn't very good. You know. Alex said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we remember we got tacos. I love it. They got great tacos, man. Oh my gosh. You know, we and I was like, yeah, the tacos are good. And he was like, ah, our food isn't that good, but our drinks. And, yeah, yeah. Because um, he's a twenty-two-year-old kid at the time. Yeah. yeah. Um, you see, they're open in the next space. Yeah. It's, you know. Um, and I've, I've, you know, I, I won't say it on air, but uh, you know, I've heard. There's been some some. Some stuff that goes on there that's probably not the best stuff. Yes. I mean, some of the worst things that I've heard about yeah. a restaurant is from there. So I wouldn't go there out of those reasons. Um, but uh, Jose those, and Alex have always been good to me. I like it yeah. in there. I, my reason I don't go there, I'd go for lunch. Yeah. But I, I can't go in there. I've tried before. I can't go in there past 8 o'clock at night because <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a fucking dirty old man. Yeah. The 22-year-old, 25-year-old girls and they're half naked drinking shots and doing stuff, which is okay, man. There's right. a place for that, and there's sure. a place for that, but I can't be seen looking at that because I look like a dirty old man, you know? <laughs> it's Even my niece, who's 36, yeah. we went, uh, was it last summer when they opened up the streets? Uh-huh. We were in there, and she's like, holy shit, I feel old. And she's 36. <laughs> so, Is there a restaurant that you won't step foot into? I don't know. Is there a place I wouldn't go? There's a place... I, I usually try to spend my money with people that have done good, yeah. that have worked with me or been a positive influence. I can't think of a place. I can't think of a place off the top of my head. Ah, I can think of a place that I won't go. <laughs> uh, there's a place that uh, I'm friends with the owners. I tried to help the owners over the past ten plus years. Uh, I've kind of put a boycott on them because um, they've kind of dissed me publicly. Mm. Like I've helped them and stuff, and then the people after I've helped them. They've told people, a oh, fucking Bud doesn't do shit for us. We know May way more than he does. Jesus. And they've kind of dissed me. And their fucking food is amazing. Mm. They do a really good job. And my friends go there all the time, and they know enough not to ask me to go. Mm. But I don't go out of principle. Yeah. And and I'm friends with them. So. Oh, wow. That's crazy. So, yeah. And I can't say the name of them. Because, yeah, no, yeah, I get it. Yeah. yeah. That's probably one of the only places I wouldn't go. 
if there's one, there's, there's a lot of things I have to learn, but one of the things that, you know, when I, when I hear, when, um, when I, I know all the relationships that you have in town and, uh, and so if there's one thing that I need to learn and take from your playbook, and that is to be more amicable with a wider range of people. Cause right, you know, okay. yeah, um, I am not that person, you know? Um, you yeah. Know. People have a different, I mean, Tom Tiffany at Scotch and Sirloin has been a friend of mine for years, and uh, he's he's a different personality than than uh, Michelle is going to be at the Brasserie, yeah. or or than uh, Joe is going to be at Across the Hall Cafe. They yeah. all have different personalities. You got to manage your right. relationship with them at you know different times. But I consider them all friends, and I would do anything to help any one of them yeah. at any time. So yeah, you're right, sure. you know, yeah. So uh, you know. It, I want to get a, two things covered before because okay. I have been here. Is it what, how long have we been on? An uh, hour. Ooh, okay, yeah. Um, do you think we're coming into like a worse situation in the next few months for restaurants in there? I mean, I a think lot of a lot's going to depend on November seventh. Really, you think that's going to be that big of a deal? Yeah, I think after November seventh, gas will go up fifty cents a gallon before the first of the year. I think the recession's going to hit harder, depending on what happens. What I think is going to happen in the election. I think they're holding back a lot of stuff now. Trying to get, trying to look good for the election. I think shit's going to change. I think it's going to be a really hard winter. Yeah. It's always bad in January and February, and there's people that are just hanging on now. Yeah, that you're going to see more people who close or, or or have some challenges. But you think it could get better depending on what happens on November seventh? Yeah, I think it could get better. Mm. I think the staffing thing is is going to be a challenge. I don't know if I told you this story, but um, I was fortunate to go talk to a, a restaurant owner who. Uh, um, the second generation of restaurant owners at a place. And uh, I don't want to call them out because I don't know if they're being yeah. comfortable with me telling a story. They're not as, you know, like Michelle doesn't care if I tell a story about Michelle, you know, but uh, I don't want to, you know, hurt these guys' relationships. So they were telling me that they lost their general manager and they lost mm-hmm. one of their uh, yeah. more, you know, tenured cooks. And if you had told me, and this is how I relate it to you, if you had told me seven, eight years ago that, hey, somebody left uh, Coleman's, yeah, and got another the cook at Coleman's left, and the manager at Lake House Pub left. Where'd they go? Uh, what restaurant did they go to? That's not what's happening now. Right. These two people left the industry for less money to get a job where they had less stress. Yeah. Monday through Friday, or you know, maybe once in a while on a Saturday, but they didn't have the stress for less money because they wanted more family life. So when you're seeing people that are tenured in the industry leave for a different job, and nobody's replacing them because you're clearly not getting the twenty year olds to go into that industry. How are these people, places going to staff? Yeah, I mean that's the that's the biggest challenge more than finances or anything is staff. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, uh, you know, we were you know yesterday for the insurance claim of the car. I mean, I'm, I'm on the phone with the person for an hour and a half, and oh my god! But the whole time I hear their kid crying in the background because they're working from home. So the entry yeah. point into a lot of these big jobs, like you think of like Geico. Geico has a big office in yeah. you know Buffalo, let's say, yeah. um, which I think they do. But anyways. So they've got a big office in Buffalo. If you're in Syracuse, you got to move to Buffalo if you want to yeah. work for them, or you got to work at a small thing. Not anymore. Now you can just you work from home, work yeah. from your living room, and go work for it, pretty much any big company you want to. So why, if you're a 28 year old kid to a 37 year old kid, guy or girl, you have an opportunity to work from home, yeah, and and make even less money, but or you can go work in a restaurant, and work 55 hours a week, and slave and sweat. They might. I don't think that. Not everybody in that generation, I don't mean to characterize them, but I don't think that your generation is driven by by money as much as they're driven by life. Yeah, for sure. And they I want th- a personal health versus the money. I was driven yeah. by money. I, look, when I was younger, I had two, three jobs. My wife and I, when we first got married, we both had two or three jobs. We had full-time jobs. We tended bar. I cooked. She tutored. She tended bar. We did all kinds of shit because, you know, before I met her, I wanted a nicer car, which got me a prettier girlfriend, which got me more money to drink with. So I, I did those things. That's yeah. not how kids are driven today. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, you really have to be some sort of crazy to be, uh, like, not an ownership. Well, you have to be crazy to be a restaurant owner, but you have to be some sort of crazy to really be in the restaurant industry. Yeah. And um, and so, or, you know, like, I, I will say, being, you know, running the bar this season and seeing, you know, most of the time I've been the one bartending. Um, Is that, I was going to ask you about that because when I saw you Saturday, are you putting yourself in the bartender role now doing it? 
Is that what you expected you were going to do once you first took it over? Were you expecting uh, to have staff and be here managing? Okay, Rebecca, you worked this shift. Lisa, you worked just this time. You worked this shift, and you're just managing everything and kind of walking around and not being the day to day. Yeah, at first when we were, when we were first talking through it, I thought to myself, I'm gonna I'm going to bartend for the month of June to to get paid from them, right? You know, for that month, and then I'm gonna have the capital set aside to be able to hire staff to then carry me through and just, you know, fund so it, the but, staff. Was it a function of not having the rev, the revenue, or was it yeah. a function of not having the staff, or was it a combination? Um, it wasn't so much that I wouldn't have the staff, because I had, I did have a girl, um, a person uh, set up to work, and, like, the I had hired her, like, a friend, person I knew, um, and then like the week before she was supposed to, she was, she was like, I can start in three weeks. It's like, perfect. I, tr- I knew her. I trusted her. She could do it. Yeah. And like the week before she found out if her mother had breast cancer oh, and geez, she was like, wow. I really don't want to pick yeah, up a yeah. second job right now. So, um, so it, it's, there's, I mean, you know, all the challenges out there cause I've talked to you about them, but, um, the challenges are they had to approve every person and they only approve oh, a certain type wow. of person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like what makes a great bartender, they don't want to work there. Um, and so, uh, that's a challenge. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a trade-off. Yeah. We had a girl that worked at the bar, uh, name was Stacy. She would never be listening to this, but, uh, my wife hated her. I fucking hated her. And she had reason to hate her. She was, we had shifts where we had two bartenders on and Stacy would steal tips from somebody else. And if you and I came in, the first thing she wants to do is do a shot with her. She was very attractive and played that, you know, yeah. like, I'm going to sleep with you kind of vibe that she would give you that, you know, and she wants to do a shot with you, and you do a shot, and she'd do a shot. Yeah. And uh, we let her do a shots because she was making two of us do shots. All right. And the next thing, you know, she did more sales on her shift than anybody. Yeah. But if you and I, you know, back in the day, it was all cash. So say I laid down a $50 bill or $20 bill and two shots and two beers was, you know, say I laid down a 50 and two shots and two beers was 22 bucks, and there was $22, $8 sitting there, and we turned around, she'd take it. Hmm. Yeah. She wouldn't let it sit there, and she figured it was her tip. Huh. And then she, she didn't want to split tips with the other bartenders. She would stuff it in her bra. Mm. And so my wife or one of the other bartenders that was a woman, at the end of her shift, she'd be hammered. Yeah. And uh, she'd have to go in the back and empty her bra to make sure she didn't steal people's money. <laughs> Once a month on her rent day, she would come in, and she, was, she wasn't 21 yet, and that's why she could work for me. But the place she wanted to work for her boyfriend wouldn't let her work till she was 21. <laughs> so... Uh, she would come in with her um, rent pants, and she'd wear like a half shirt and <laughs> pants with no ass in it and no front in it, and she'd bring a magic marker, and for 20 bucks you could sign her ass. And she would make <laughs> rent money on that shift by doing that. Now, that wasn't, is that what we want in a bartender? Right. Is that the kind of, because there's other people that aren't acting like that, and it's very, but one thing she did is we fucking made money. We <laughs> killed. On nights that Stacy worked, we killed. What do you we killed. Would that stuff get it? Could you get away with that today? No. Oh my God. No way. No way in hell. Because there'd be pictures of it. Yeah. There'd be pictures of me back then. So I never had you to had sign. You had those pants? I, not, I didn't have, I've had some good <laughs> pants. But, but back then, I mean, that's what you wanted. You, yeah, you, for sure. I mean, that wouldn't work. I mean, you know. Uh, but the, it's a catch. Yeah. The, the woman that works for me now at the bar um, who's bartending. She's just, you know, like I'm getting to the point with the public. Like this guy comes into the bar on Saturday. And he's like, comes up and he's, you know, hitting the bar and, yeah. you know. He knows you. You've been in. You, you, he doesn't. He's never uh, been there before. Oh, jeez. So he just walks up. He's a customer. He walks up and he's like, smack the bar. He's like, so what do you got here? And, you know, I'm like, oh, God damn it. Uh, I'm uh, like, uh, I'm like, well, the menu is right there. And, and he's uh, like, he's like, all right, give me your best thing. And I'm like, I go, okay, well, do you want a cocktail, a beer, a cider, a wine? Uh, whatever your best cider is, I'll take that. It's like, okay, well, the most popular right now is pumpkin. Oh, pumpkin's disgusting. Yeah. I would never drink that. And I was like, I go, what dude, do you want? I go, dude, you asked for the best thing. Yeah. That's the best thing. He Clearly picked- pumpkin fucking cider is not the best thing on the <laughs> menu anywhere. So he picks up a bottle of wine that I have on sale sitting right by the cash register. He grabs this bottle around and he goes, what's this? And I go, oh my God. I, I looked at him, I go, did you just ask me what a bottle of red wine was? And he put it down and he walked away. That's uh, so. That's just right now my personality of like just you know I yeah, I yeah. clearly probably shouldn't be bartending. So that's why when Nikki is there bartending, I say Nikki, do me a favor and if you want to switch, we'll switch. But do me a favor, you 
to handle you the customer. I'll sit here and make all the mixed drinks. Yeah, that's good. And yeah, she's yeah. like, okay, great. That's cool. So, um, yeah, so... I, um, but that's the challenge I think people are going to have is it's slower. Yeah. Uh, a lot of them had a really good summer, so they have some money. Um, hopefully, the, uh, especially the newer places that don't understand, we can talk about who those places are, are probably already in a, in a little bit of a hole, but they say, oh, geez, I had a good August. Yeah. September's a little slower. It's only going to get slower. Yeah. And if they don't have money put away, they're going to get killed by the time March comes. Yeah. I'm hoping to get Ryan McMahon. I got to reach out to him again. He Last time I talked to him, he mentioned something about maybe doing another voucher thing. That cool. would be cool to push push some money out toward these independents, but it's going to yeah. be a tough a tough winter, man. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I think I think we're going to see a lot more close. I think we're going to see yeah. more restaurants close between November and March than we have in the, the whole past time. I agree. two and a half years. But do you know what the sad part is? Huh. Six months after that, somebody will go into all those places. Yeah. Somebody that shouldn't. I, like I said, I got a buddy who's trying to open a place. I talk to you, and yeah. I'm trying to talk him out of it. He's like, oh, man, it's going to kill. Dude, you're... You, you're gonna put thirty or forty grand into it, and and uh, which isn't gonna be enough to take it. You don't own the dirt. You're gonna run it. You're already a partial alcoholic. <laughs> it's gonna make you a worse alcoholic. All your friends are gonna come in and try to hit on you. Do you get that now or? Oh, all the time. People always coming in and hit on me. Hitting you for like, hey man, give me a beer, give me a beer. Oh, no. I thought you meant women. No, hey. no, no. <laughs> we used to get people to come in the bar, and I would go. Pfft. If somebody comes in here and says, oh, I'm friends with Bud, I drink for free, they're not my fucking friend, mm-hmm. right? Because I would never do that. I would never go yeah. in and want something for free. I mean, ever. luckily, yeah, I usually, I'm, I'm typically the one, I'm like, you're not paying for this, yeah. you know? Yeah. No, I wouldn't. I would never take, I don't go, to, look, I've had people go and try to give me, I don't want free food, man. I don't go to yeah. Coleman's to get free fucking beer. I don't yeah. go to Brasserie to have them give me a free soda. I, I want that. Yeah, I don't want that. I go I, there to spend my money. Yeah, um, Joe, it does that whenever I go to across the hall, yeah. and I usually, whenever I'm going there, I make sure I have cash, and I usually, you know. Well, he I'll tried leave. to do that to me a couple of times. So now what I do, and he hasn't said nothing about it, but I buy online. Oh, so I order nice. before I get there what the special is because I'll text him, yeah. and then I go online and buy it and pay for it. So I, he has to take my money. <laughs> Has to take yeah. Money. yeah. So uh, is there, I mean, with, with, with inevitably so many places that are going to be going out of business and I, I do, I'm going to do a podcast in the next month. I just don't know. And maybe you're the expert, but you know, to talk about it, but I, I want to do something because it's going to happen as much as I'd love to be able to prevent it as much as I would oh, love. Same to, here. Yeah. As much as I would love to be able to show up and a restaurant could call me and say, I'm on the verge of going out of business. What do I do? And I could say, hey, here's the game plan. In three yeah. months, you're going to be profitable and everything will be wonderful. That's not going to happen. Um, why do you think not? Why do I think that it's not possible for them to... Well, first of all, I don't have the game plan. If I knew, I'd be fucking, you know, the smartest and Even if sometimes, person. dude, if you had the game plan, yeah, 50% of the time, they're not going to listen to you. I think They're going to think they're smarter than you. Well, there's that for sure. But and then I, the other 25% of the time... They're so fucking far in the hole that no matter what you teach them, it's not going to come out. Yeah. And believe it or not, probably 25% of the time, they're just not in the right place. They don't have the yeah. right location. They don't have the right menu. They don't have the right staff. Something isn't right about it. I mean, I, look, Devin's a great guy. I love Brian well. Yeah. If he was in Cicero, if he was in Fayetteville, if he was in another place, he probably would have done really, really well. Yeah. That spot was not conducive for him to be successful. No. Never had a chance. No. Um, menu was cool. Food was good. Yeah. You know, the big, one of the biggest things I think, um, is, and I've read this statistic when I was, when I was opening three, one fried is the, the public has space in their brain for six brands. And, and so there's six places that they will frequent, you know, they'll go there one or two times a week. And, you know, like, you know, you think about it, you know, I'm a target person, right? I might go to Walmart for something. But for the most part, I'm a Target person. Honestly, I'm an Amazon person. Yeah, I was just gonna say I'm more of that now. I don't even. I, I'm so fucking lazy. I won't even go buy potato chips. I mean, if yeah. I want a certain chip, I go. I can buy these lentil chips on Amazon. They'll be here tomorrow, and I just hit a right. button. Yeah, and I hate to say that, but until a local company figures out how yeah. to do it as well, or sorry, I you don't know, know how they can. Yeah, yeah. But so the general public has space for six brands, huh. and so and I don't know. I haven't investigated or researched that. That makes enough. sense when you say it. Yeah, and so what I one thing I'm realizing is as a restaurant, you really have to be funded for three or four years. Oh if, yeah. If you even have a shot at making it, because like 
for us, yeah, we can open up to great fanfare. We're we're the second chicken sandwich only restaurant on the block. You know, So Fly, as much as I hate them, was here before we were. So we're the second one on the block. Syracuse.com is going to come in and do an article. You know, Bridge. We're going to be on Bridge Street News Channel. You know, all these great media outlets are going to are going to write stuff. You're going to be hammered for the first month, but then it's going to die down. And then the next new place comes in town, and the next right. new people on Bridge Street, and the next new social media article, and those, and all of a sudden somebody's not going to you three times yeah. a week. Maybe they're going once a month. Right. And so you really have to be funded to carry yourself from when that dies down to two years when people are familiar enough and visit you enough to make you one of their six, yeah. you know? That's and a so, good point, especially with bars. Yeah. If you've got to go open a bar, you know, but my buddy that's thinking about it is, dude, so you got 10 ha- tap handles. It's 100 bucks a keg. you got to yeah. probably have half of them with a backup keg. Yeah. So there's 1500 bucks in yeah. product. you got to have a bar. Right. Probably four to five grand a bar minimum to just have the minimum stuff that you need. Then you got to buy food. Yeah. So you got you got to have $30,000 to open just be, just to have the product to have on the shelf. Yeah. And then you got to fund your payroll. Right. You, you know, so it's challenging. So I want to do a podcast where it's how to close a restaurant. We talked about that. Yeah. Um, I mean, as important as it is to be able to help people now who are in trouble, the fact of the matter is if you're not willing to be creative enough, and you know, if, if you can't, like anybody, and I shouldn't say it like that. Anyone today owns a restaurant now has it within them to figure out how to be successful, how to make it. You, you, maybe you did pick the wrong location, and if you've been open for a year and it hasn't worked, it's going to be really tough to now all of a sudden figure it out. You know, I'm not right. There's some places, yes, they just need. You just can't time. get to make it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but there are some places where it's like that was the wrong concept for the wrong location. Listen, if you're there for ten years, you're, you're still probably not still gonna not going to do that well, but. You know, I mean, I don't know how many owners do it, but when I'm thinking about a new sandwich at the restaurant and I'm out of an idea, I go search best fried chicken sandwich in Los Angeles, in New York City, and see Nashville. if there's something similar. And yeah. yeah, or I'm not similar. I'm just trying to steal their ideas. Yeah. Not ste- well. That's a Mark you know. Bullis thing. I'll give Mark credit. He's a, he runs a very good business. He's a very me first kind of guy. I, I respect him for that. I've known him forever, but uh, I see him on, and we've been on social media together. He'll go, I'm on my way to Nashville. Where should I stop? I want to see some new food. Yeah. And he'll find some menu items. He goes out there on purpose. He's not going out there to drink on, on uh, Main right. Street. He's going down there to check this out. And he'll go to these restaurants and say, hey, you know what? I just saw this cool taco or this cool chicken sandwich. And he brings that shit back up here. Yeah. And, you know, he does well. Yeah. So I don't know I don't know who that person is I need to bring on. It might be like a multi-guest or multi-episode thing, but how to close a restaurant. That's is, a good one, you know, yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Well, bud... Thank thanks, you very much. Anthony, thanks. That's fun, man. Thanks. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Appreciate it. Everybody, uh, restaurantqb.net? Yes. Dot .net. Yeah. So if you want to get connected with Bud, restaurantqb.net, or just look in the um, you know wanted section. Usually there's yes, like the good pit, big picture of me. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks, bud. Thanks, man.